Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. This is the 17th project video in our machine learning project series and in this video we are going to discuss how we can build a spam mail prediction system using machine learning with Python. So this is one of the most important and interesting applications of machine learning as spam mails is something that we come across in our day-to-day -day life, right? So in this video, let's try to understand how we can use machine learning effectively in order to predict which mails are spam mails and which mails are non-spam mails, okay? So that is the uh, end goal of this particular project. And first of all, I'll explain you more about this uh, problem statement. Then we can discuss about the workflow which we are going to follow for this particular project. And then we can move on to the hands-on part where we will try to build a machine learning system that can make this prediction okay so let's get started as i've told you spam mails is something that we face in our day to day life and in a day you can uh, receive multiple mails and uh, more than 50% of those mails can be spam mails so these can be something that uh, says that you have a job offer or you can get a discount or offer something like that and most of the time those won't be true and if you have email apps like uh, gmail or other apps so those apps can find and uh, you know classify which mails are spam mails and which mails are non spam mails and the spam mails uh, you know end in the spam folder so we are going to build a similar system using machine learning that can correctly predict which mails can be the spam mails or the which mails are non spam mails okay so we can classify mails as two types one is spam mail and the other one is the am mail so a spam mail is nothing but as, as i have told you before so those mails claim to give you some offers and gifts and most of the time they won't be true okay so they they can be some kind of promotion as well say if, say for example i have given you an example here so this mail says free entry in a, in a, to a weekly competition to win fa cup uh, final tickets 21st may 2005 text fa2871121 to receive entry question so you may receive these kind of questions right so this is an example of a spam mail which is most probably going to be a false one so this won't be true most of the times right and there are other kind of mail called as am mails so am mails are nothing but non spam mails so they can be the mails sent to you by your family members your friends or your co-workers and so on okay so if you read this message please go ahead with what's i just wanted to be sure do have a great weekend abiola okay so this is you know we can see this mail is nothing but sent by a friend to you okay so that's how you can classify mails one is the spam mails and the other one another one is the non spam mails and the non spam mails can be called as am mails and that is what we are going to do in this particular project so we are going to look at a uh, mail and predict whether that mail uh, comes under this spam mail or this comes under am mail okay so this helps us to determine which mails should go to the spam folder and which mails uh, should come to your inbox so that is the end goal of this particular project okay so so let's see how we are how we are going to you know do this so this is the workflow that we are going to follow so first is that we need to get the mail data so we need uh, the data for both the spam mails as well as am mails and we will uh, use this data to train our machine learning model okay but we cannot uh, do it directly first we need to process this data and the second step will be data pre-processing as you might know that it is easier for a machine or a computer to understand numbers but it is uh, you know very tough for a computer to understand text and you know paragraphs so we will uh, do some processing where we will convert this text so we know that mails uh, will be in text and we will try to convert this text and paragraph into more meaningful numbers and that will be done in this uh, data pre-processing part and after that we will split our data set into training data and testing data where we know that this training data is used to train our machine learning model and the test data is used to evaluate our model okay so once we split our origin data set into training data and test data we will feed it to our uh, logistic regression model so the training data will be used to train this logistic regression model so in this case we are using a logistic regression model because it uh, logistic regression models are the best when it comes to binary classification problem binary classification means there will be two classes and we are uh, trying to classify these into two classes the two classes in this case are a, a spam mail and an am mail okay so we will train this logistic regression model with this training data and once you have done that you will have a trained logistic regression model now when you give a new mail your uh, logistic regression model will predict whether that mail is a spam mail or an am mail okay so this is what we are going to do in this particular video so first we will uh, get this mail data and once we process this data we will uh, split it into training data and test data and once we train this logistic regression model when you give a new mail it will uh, try to predict whether that mail is a spam mail or an am mail okay so this is the procedure that we are going to follow so with that understanding now we can move on to the hands-on part okay so I'll uh, 
open my google collaboratory so i have connected my google collaboratory system here and uh, first of all we need to uh, upload our system upload our data set to the uh, google collaboratory environment okay so just a second i'll just close this okay so the first step is uh, updating or uploading the data set to this collab environment so you can go to this files option okay so uh, here you will see an option called as upload to session storage or you can just right click here and give upload option and uh, now you need to upload the mail data set so this is the data set that i have uh, the name of this data set is mail data dot csv okay so csv represents comma separated value i'll give the link for this data set file in my video description you can download it from here you can also get this uh, data set from kaggle okay so it is available in Kaggle as well. So once you have uploaded this, uh, you know, data set, now we can do the coding part. And if you are not sure about Google Collaboratory, if you haven't worked up in Google Collaboratory, um, you know, I'll just give you a link in the cards where I have explained to you about what is meant by Google Collaboratory and how you can work on that. Okay, so you can watch that particular video. So now we can get started with our coding. So the first part will be importing the dependencies. Okay, so dependencies are nothing but the libraries and the functions that we need. So here I'll just create a text as importing the dependencies. Okay, so importing the dependencies. So we need to import some libraries here. So first of all, I'll import numpy as np. Okay, so these are some very important libraries that we generally use in machine learning. So second, I'll import pandas. So import pandas as pd. And uh, so numpy library is used to create numpy arrays. So in most of the cases, we need to create arrays. And that's why we need this numpy library in order to create those numpy arrays. And I'm uh, importing this numpy in a short form as np. So this is the general convention we use. OK, and I'm importing pandas as pd. So this pandas data, uh, pandas uh, library is used to create data frames. As you can see here, these uh, data set is actually in a csv format and it is not easy to analyze the data from the csv file so we need to uh, you know put that together in a uh, more structured table and that is what pandas is used for so pandas uh, helps us to create data frames which helps us to structure our data well okay so that's why we are importing the pandas library next we will import from sklearn so sklearn is another important library that is uh, you know used in machine learning and data science applications so from sklearn dot uh, model selection i'm going to import train test split function okay so as i've told you before we need to split our data set into training data and testing data and for that we need this train test split function and next we, we are going to import a vectorizer function so from sklearn dot feature extraction dot text import tf i df vectorizer okay so this the purpose of this tf idf vectorizer is that as i've told you before we need to convert the text data the text data in this case is nothing but the mail data into numerical values so we will convert them into more meaning meaningful numbers so that our machine learning model can understand it if you just feed the text data the machine learning model cannot understand it okay so that's the reason we are uh, converting these uh, text uh, you know text data into numerical values and for that we are using a tf idf vectorizer which we will use uh, you know in order to convert the text into feature vectors so feature vectors are nothing but numerical values okay so that's why we are importing this function tf idf vectorizer and we are importing it from sklearn dot feature uh, extraction dot text okay so from this module we are uh, you know importing this tf idf vectorizer function and now we are going to import our logistic regression function so from sklearn dot linear model import logistic regression okay so i have already made video on uh, what is the intuition behind logistic regression and how you can build a logistic regression model from scratch and uh, if you want to see that video you can check out my uh, youtube channel so you will find that video there okay so in this case we are going to use a logistic regression model to classify the mail into spam mail or an am mail and then we are going to import from sklearn dot metrics import accuracy score so as i have told you before we will split the data set into training data and testing data and this training data will be used uh, in order to uh, train our logistic regression model and uh, once we do that we will use the test data 
in order to evaluate our model and that is the reason we are uh, you know importing this accuracy score function so this accuracy score is used to evaluate our model in order to find how well our model is performing and uh, how many good predictions it is making okay so these are the dependencies and the libraries that we need so i'm going to run this uh, particular cell so in order to run this cell you can press shift plus enter so it will execute this cell and go to the next one okay so the first part is done and now the next part will be data collection and pre-processing so i'll just make a text here as data collection and pre-processing so the first step will be to load the data from the csv file uh, we have this mail.csv file right so we will load the data from this csv file to a pandas data frame so we have already imported pandas as pd right so that will be our next step in order to load the data to a data frame so i'll make a comment here as loading the data from csv file to a pandas data frame so that will be the next step and i'll name this data frame as raw mail data raw mail data which is equal to pd.readcsv so pd represents panda so we have imported pandas in a, in a short form as pd so pd.readcsv so this read csv function will uh, load the data from the csv file to a data frame so read csv and uh, we need to mention quotes here and within this quotes you need to give the location of your data set file so you can see this mail data.csv so you have to upload this data set file and once you upload this you can see this options menu here if you click that you can find this copy path option so copy the path from here and you can paste it inside this quote okay so now i'll run this cell and this will load the data from my csv file to this raw mail data data frame so you can just try to print this uh, raw mail data okay I'll run this so you will have your data set here so the first column is category so which says whether it is a spam mail or an am mail and the second uh, you know column is the message so this is the mails that we have okay so now there is a bit of a problem here so this data set contains a lot of missing values and uh, null values so we need to convert them into null strings so that will be our next part so we need to replace the null values with the null string so this is my next step so let's see how we can do that so we have this raw mail data and i'm going to take this data this uh, data frame and i'm going to uh, replace all the null values with the null string so you can think about null values as the missing values so i'll name uh, uh, i'll create a new data frame as mail data so mail data is equal to raw mail data so raw mail data is the data frame which we created before okay so raw mail data dot where pd dot not null so pd is pandas pd dot not null raw mail data come on so double quotes so there shouldn't be any uh, space with between this quotes so you just put double quotes here so mail data is equal to raw mail data dot where pd dot uh, not null raw mail data uh, this quotes so this where uh, function is used to carry out some condition so this condition is nothing but if i have some you know null values i want to replace it with uh, you know this uh, empty string or null string so you can call this as empty string because this string doesn't contain anything so it is just empty and we can call this as a null string so that is what represented by this double quotes okay so it's actually not a double quote it is a opening quote and a ending quote so please don't uh, you know use a double quote here i just uh, you know misspelled it so you have to use a opening quote opening single quote and a closing single quote okay so mail data is equal to raw mail data dot where pd dot uh, not null raw mail data comma uh, one opening code and one single code oh, so this will replace all your null values with a null string so let's run this so i'll uh, press shift plus enter now we can uh, try to print the first five rows of this particular data frame okay so this will help us to see the sample of the data frame that we have so printing the first five rows of the data frame so the data frame is nothing but mail data right so mail data dot yet so this yet function will uh, print the first five rows of the column 
sorry the first five rows of this data frame okay so this is the serial number that we have and the second column or the first column so let's not consider the serial column uh, okay so the first column is category which says whether uh, the mail is an am mail or a spam mail and uh, the second uh, column is your message your mail okay so the first mail that we have is an uh, am mail the second mail as well is an am mail and the third mail is a spam mail and so on okay so this is how you can just see the sample of your data set now let's try to check how many uh, you know number of rows and columns are there or in other words words how many uh, mails we totally have in our data set okay so the next part will be checking the number of rows and columns so we are basically uh, you know checking the size of our data set rows and columns in the data frame so as you can see there are only two columns here right so one is the category column and the another one is message column so i'll just try to print this so mail data dot shape so when you run this code it will give you the number of rows and column that you have in your data set so the first uh, value represents the total number of uh, rows you have and the second value represents the total number of columns so if you see the second value it is two so we know that we have only two columns so the first column is category and the second column is messages and the first value which is the total number of uh, rows says 5572 that means you have uh, 5572 different mails and we have the labels for all this mail the labels are nothing but whether that mail is a spam mail or an am mail okay so this is the data set that we have so, and this is not a small data set so we have good number of uh, you know data here so which is about 5572 mails right so we can go on to the next part now as you can see the labels here so one label is am and the another label is a spam right so what we are going to do is label encoding so in this case we will try to encode this label to numerical values so basically what we will do is we will try to change this uh, am and uh, we will replace all the you know text as am as one and all the spam value will be changed to one so this part is called as label encoding where we just want to replace this text value with numerical uh, you know numerical values and in this column we just have only uh, two values one is am and the another one is spam so this am will be numbered as uh, uh, you know one and this spam will be numbered as zero and this part is called as label encoding so i'll just make a text here so it's always a good practice to make this text and comments of what you are doing in a particular code because if someone sees your code it you know it will help them to understand what you are doing in that particular cell so that's the reason i'm making this uh, text and comments clearly so it's a good practice for you to as well to include this uh, uh, text and comments in your code so this part will be label encoding so i'll just make a text as label spam mail as a zero and non spam mail that is am mail so i'll just name this as am mail just remember that am mails are nothing but non spam mails so am mail as one okay so we have two kinds of mail and one is a spam mail and the another one is am mail so i'm uh, numbering the spam mails as zero and am mails as one so this is how we generally label our data uh, you know in our data set so say for example if you are predicting whether a person has diabetes or not you may uh, you know label a person with all a person with diabetes as one and a person without diabetes as zero and so on so these are called as labels and this is the label that we are encoding so one is zero and the another one is one okay so how we can label the data set is mention the name mail data dot loc i'll explain you what we are doing in this particular code i'll just complete this loc mail data category is equal to spam okay so it's spam again category mm. and there should be another bracket here is equal to zero 
So basically what we are trying to do here is, so I'm taking this mail data data frame and I'm going to locate few values. So what values I'm locating is that, so in this mail data data frame, take this category column alone. So we, we don't want this message column, right? So we are not uh, encoding this part. We are just encoding the first column, the category column. So I'm mentioning or I'm taking this category column. So that's why I mentioned category. And if uh, the value is spam in this category column, so if the text in this category column is spam, and then in that case, I want to replace all the values with zero so that is what is uh, you know mentioned by this particular line of code okay so and i'll just copy this and now let's do the same for am mails as well so i'm going to name or i'm going to encode all the am mails as one so you just need to change this spam to am okay so i'll just number this as one so let's run this and see whether this works Okay, so what this basically do is the first line of the code will change all the spam as a zero and all the am mails as one. So I'll just make a text here as spam will be represented by zero and am will be represented by one. Okay, so now we can uh, split the data set into uh, features and targets say for example what we are going to do is i'm going to separate this message and uh, this category separately so i'm going to separate the message and its labels so this part will be separating the data as text and labels okay so text and labels the text is nothing but the messages and the mails that we have and the labels are the category that you have whether it is a spam mail or an mail. so the reason we are doing this is we will feed uh, the data and the label separately to your uh, machine learning model it's like uh, giving the x-axis value and the y-axis value it is similar to it so in this case your x-axis value will be uh, the text the messages that you have and the y-axis value will be your label whether it is one or zero okay so we basically take the features or the input data so in this case the input data is nothing but message and the output or target column is this category column so we generally take this uh, input column uh, input uh, feature or input column as x and this output column or target as y so i'm going to create two variables here one is x and the another one is y and i'm going to save all these messages in this x and all the labels in this y okay so x is equal to mail data which is the data frame that we have messages so the name of this second column is messages so we need to mention this so mail data and within this porch we need to mention message yeah so if yeah, there is no yes here so it is message and this y will be your labels so label is nothing but the category column so we need to mention it so y is equal to mail data category okay so this basically will separate your uh, data set into x and y where x will be uh, all the messages and y will be all the categories or labels so let's run this and now we can try and print this x and y separately so let's try to print x so it will print all the messages that we have and now you can print your y so y will be one or zero where one represents am mails and zero represents spam mails which we have encoded here okay so this is the next step and now what we are going to do is we are going to split this x and y into training data and test data so this is one of the most important steps that we do in all the machine learning projects we work on so as i've told you before the reason is one set of data will be used to train our model and the other set of data will be used to evaluate our test our model so this part is train test split or I'll just write this as splitting the data into training data and test data. Okay, so if you remember, we have imported the function train test split, and we are going to use this function in order to split our data set into training data and test data. So in order to do this, we need to mention four uh, arrays. So the first array is x train, second array is x test, third array is y train, and your last fourth array is y test. So basically, what these four arrays are. So we have this uh, x and y. So the x is the entire data set that we have. So x and y are the total data set that we have, and I'm 
now i'm going to split this x into two parts so one part of the x will be your training data and the other part will be your test data so similarly we will split the y so all the corresponding x values will be split correspondingly so all the training data messages or the all the training data mails will go into this extreme and the corresponding labels all the labels for those training data will go to this y train and the remaining x test so the testing data for all the mails will go to this x test and the corresponding labels for all the mails in this x test go to this y test okay so this is how we generally split our data set into training data and test data and i'll uh, use the function that we have imported which is train test split function and within this function you need to mention the parameters such as x y because x and y are the data set which we are going to split right so you need to mention this so your train test split function now uh, will split your x and y into two uh, you know these four arrays where uh, two arrays are your training data and the other two arrays x test and y test so your x train and your y train are the training data and x test and y test are your test data okay and uh, there are few other parameters that we need to mention so i'll mention my test size as uh, 0.2 test size is equal to 0 0.2 okay so test size is nothing but the amount of uh, data you want in your test uh, you know data set let's say uh, let's say that we have totally 100 data points in our data set so uh, generally what we will do is we will take 80 percentage or uh, 90 percentage of the data as training data and we take uh, 10 percentage or 20 percentage of the data as your test data so generally training data will have will contain more data points okay so here 0 0.2 represents 20 percentage of data so if uh, totally we have uh, 5571 mails right so out of this 80 percentage will go to your training data which has x train and and, uh, y train and the remaining 20 percentage of the data will go to the x test and the y test so you need to mention how much uh, number of data points you want in your test uh, data so that is your test size and finally we have random state so random state is not a very important aspect it is actually a very simple one so you can give any uh, values for your random state so i'll just give three so uh, the reason for this random state is when you use this train test split function so each time you use this your data will be split in a different way okay so uh, the first time you split your data it will be in a different manner so and the next time you split the data and different uh, mails will go into the training data and test data so if you want this uh, data to be split in the same way in all the cases then you can mention a random state 3 so let's say that you are practicing this code and you are splitting your uh, data set so if you mention random state is equal to 2 then your data set will be split in a different manner but if you uh, just use this random state is equal to 3 as I have used your data will be split in the same manner that uh, my data is splitting so this is just to reproduce the code if this is uh, you know used in order to split the data exactly in the way that we want okay so you can give any uh, you know number for this random state so we are creating four arrays which are x train x test and y train and y test so uh, x train is not x train is your uh, training data messages and uh, your x test is the test data messages and your y train is the label for this training data and y test is the label for this test data and we are using this train test split function and we have four parameters here x and y because we are splitting this x and y uh, right so x and y are the total data set and we are splitting them and the next one is uh, test size which is the amount of data you want in your test size so 0 0.2 means 20 percentage of data go into your test uh, data and if you mention 0 0.3 that means you are taking 30 percentage of the entire data set as your test data and finally we have the random state so i'll run this i'll press shift plus enter okay so you can also try to print the shape of x train uh, so i'll just print the shape of x first so x shape so let's print x shape and we can also print x test and uh, let's print x train as well so let this be x test and the second one be x train so let's see how many data points goes into x train and x test okay i need to mention x train dot shape so so this will give the total number of rows and uh, columns you have okay so x uh, dot shape contains 5572 rows so the second value is empty so empty means there is only one column as you can see here x contains only one column which is all these messages so you don't need to look at this serial number column so that doesn't comes under column so this is the only column that we have and hence you have, you don't have any value here okay so your original data set contains 5572 data points and out of those values 80 percentage of the data 4457 will be your x train and the 20 percentage of data triple one five will go to your x test okay so this is how you, we can split our data into training data and test data
so the next part of the code is to split your uh, data sorry to convert your text data into numerical values as i have told you before if you feed all this text to your logistic regression model it doesn't understand anything so we need to convert this all this text data into meaningful numerical values okay so that is the next part and this part is called as feature extraction okay so i name this uh, as feature extraction as you might remember that we have imported the tf idf vectorizer uh, function in order to convert this text value in, uh, into numerical values okay so just a second okay so uh, the thing that we are going to do here is transform the text data to feature vectors that can be used as input to the logistic regression model okay so that's what we are going to do now so we need to convert this text data into feature vectors feature vectors are we know that vector is uh we know some numerical values so we are going to convert those text into those numerical values so that we can feed those values to our logistic regression so those uh, numerical values will act as the input data okay so I'll, I'll create a variable as feature extraction and in this feature extraction i'm going to load the tfidf TF IDF vectorizer okay so this is the function i'm going to use and we need to uh, mention certain parameters here one is uh, minimum df min df i'll explain you what this means i'll just complete this so min df is equal to one stop words Stop words is equal to English and uh, lowercase is equal to true. So these are the parameters that we need. So three parameters. So first of all, let's try to understand what does this TFIDF vectorizer does. So I have made a separate video on this feature extraction of text and uh, uh, what is this TFIDF vectorizer and how this works. And if you want a very detailed explanation on this, I'll give the link for this particular video in this video description. You can check that video after watching this one. Okay. So, but I'll just give you a, a short explanation of what this TFIDF vectorizer does. Okay. So first of all, it looks at this data and if you just uh, see all the spam mails uh, all the spam mails may contains the words like free offer discounts and so on okay so this uh, tf idea factor is try to go through all the words in your document so in your in this the document is nothing but the data set that we have so it will try to go through all the words in this document and uh, if the word is repeated several times it will get some values let's say a particular word is repeated thousand times in this entire uh, data set then it will get some score if a uh, word is repeated only under times Times it in, then it will get a smaller score and so on okay so similarly it will try to uh, give some value or give some score to all the words that has been present in our data set okay and this is uh, the most important one so this uh, value so this uh, importance score or the weight score is used by our model to uh, find which uh, you know uh, mails can be spam mails or which mails can be am mails. say for example as i've told you before there is a possibility that uh, the spam uh, mails can contain the words like free offer discounts and so on so these all these words will uh, contain uh, these words and uh, we have already named this uh, spam mails as zero right so now what the logistic regression model will do is link all those uh, you know words like free discounts and so on so they all all of those things get some numerical values uh, get some feature vectors as numerical values and they will be related to this uh, label spam which is zero okay and other mails will get some other score so uh, you know the first mail is an amel so go until uh, juron point and so on so all these words will get some other score values and uh, all this will be linked to this target so this is our model can find the difference between spam mails and amels by going through that importance value that score value which is given by the tf idf vectorizer okay so that is the step which we are doing here so we need to convert uh, this text into uh, numerical values so these numerical values are like the importance number so if a word is re repeated many times it will get get a particular score and if a number is repeated uh, or if a text is repeated less number of times it will get some other score so that is how a tf idf vectorizer works and uh, as i've told you before please watch that uh, video on feature extraction and tf idf vectorizer so if you want a uh, 
more detailed explanation okay and here we have used uh, some parameters so the first parameter that we use is minimum or min uh, underscore df so this is basically that if the score of a particular word is uh, less than one then we we need to ignore it okay so if the score is maximum if the score is more than one okay so if the score is greater than one for a particular word then we can include it so this basically means that if a word is not repeated if the word is repeated only once in that case we don't want to use those words because those words won't be uh, that important for our prediction okay so this is uh, the reason for using this min df which is nothing but the minimum uh, score uh, that is given by this vectorizer to a particular word okay so this this is value this score will be uh, given to all the words individually and the next uh, parameter that we have is stop words and in this stop words we have this uh, parameter called as english so stop words are those words that will be repeated multiple times in a document so we have the words like kiss was are etc right but these words doesn't make much sense and much meaning say for example you have this uh, the word did is the and so on so all this we don't want all these words so these are common words that will be in, uh, be there in all the main so we don't want all these uh, words so uh, those words are called as stop words and we want to ignore that those words so when you give stop words in, is equal to english uh, it will contain all these set of words that are not important for us and all those uh, words will be ignored from our document or our data set so that will be your second parameter and finally we have lowercase so basically all the letters will be uh, you know changed to lowercase letter which is better for the processing so these are uh, the three uh, main parameters that we have so minimum df will uh, choose all the words that have uh, more score that our uh, higher score that one and the second parameter is stop words so all the stop words will be removed the words that doesn't have much meaning and the third one is uh, converting all the letters into lowercase letter so i'm basically loading this tf uh, the idf vectorizer into this variable called as feature extraction so i'm loading one instance of this tf idf vectorizer now we need to use this uh, vectorizer function uh, in order to convert this uh, data set okay so that will be our next step so I'll create an array as extrain features and I'm going to uh, convert my extrain as you know this extrain uh, uh, we have split up the data set into extrain x test y train and y test we don't need to convert this y train and y test because they they just contain the values as 1 and 0 so we don't need to do anything with it we just need to change the values of x train and x test so it will contain messages like this so we need to convert them and i'm going to convert all these messages into numbers and i'm going to store it in x train features okay so this x train the messages in this x train will be converted into numerical values and those will be stored in this uh, array called as x train features so in this we need to use feature extraction so x train features is equal to feature extraction feature extraction dot fit transform so this feature extraction is nothing but your uh, tf idf vectorizer as you know that we have loaded this tf uh, idf vectorizer into a variable called as feature extraction and now i'm uh, going to use this feature extraction for the processing so extrain feature is equal to feature extraction dot fit transform so this will basically fit your uh, data so the data is nothing but all the mails that we have so it will fit all those mails into your vectorizer function and this vectorizer function once it has fitted to this data it will transform so uh, there are basically two steps that are happening here one is fitting all this data into your vectorizer and after that it will transform all the data into feature vectors which are nothing but numerical values so in that you in this parenthesis you need to mention what we are going to convert so i'm going to convert my x train into features right so we need to mention this x train here so this is our next step and similarly we need to convert uh, all the messages in this x test to x test features so that will be our next array which is x test features and one main thing that you need to remember here is feature extraction tra dot transform so here we don't uh, fit the data again so we will just fit the data only with the training data okay so we don't fit the data again for the test data so th there are basically three steps so the first step is fitting the data or fitting uh, this uh, uh, training data into your vectorizer and using this uh, vectorizer to transform your x train and using the same vectorizer in order to uh, transform your x test okay so this parenthesis should contain x test so the main thing that you need to do is you shouldn't uh, you know write 
uh, feature extraction dot fit transform in the second case so we don't want to fit our vectorizer to our xtest data because we don't want our model to look at this xtest so that is the reason so we just want to fit our data with the xtrain and based on that fit we want to convert the xtrain and uh, xtest into their respective features okay and i'll just also do a small thing here i'm going to convert y train and y test values as integers so basically what we are doing is we have labeled this as one and zero right so sometimes this will be uh, considered as uh, you know strings as you can see the data type here as objects right so sometimes the, uh, this is what happens and we don't want that. So I want to convert all those values as uh, integers. So if we convert all the values as integers, then it is then it is easier for our machine to uh, understand it. So we are going to convert all the values as integers. So I'll just take X train and X test, sorry, Y train and Y test. So Y train will contain all the labels for X test. So Y train is equal to Y train dot as type in so i'm taking all the values inside this uh, y train and i'm converting all of them into integers so the reason is that this one and zero won't be considered as uh, you know integers they will be considered as some objects or strings so that's the reason we are doing it so this is not a big deal so next we need to do the same for y test so y test is equal to y test dot as type int so it's it's basically the same thing so let's run this Okay, so the first part of code is uh, loading the TF-IDF vectorizer. So once we load it, we will convert all the X-train and X-trace into uh, their corresponding feature vectors. And after that, we are uh, converting the Y-train and Y-test into integer values, which are 1 and 0. Okay, so now you can try and print your X-test and uh, X-train. So I'll print X-train. Now, as you can see, I... Sorry, so Xtrain is nothing but uh, your data which is not been transformed. So Xtrain is your original data, this uh, text data. And now let's try to print our Xtrain features. Okay, so this Xtrain features will contain only numerical values. So now I'm going to uh, print Xtrain features. Okay, let's see how this looks like. As you can see here, now it contains a lot of numbers. So basically what happens is if you take this uh, first sentence, uh, as I've told you before, each sentence will get some score based on the vectorizer function and it will be given that score. So this is how you, you can convert uh, your text data into numerical values. It's not like you can convert them into any numerical value. So it's not like that. It should have that meaning and that meaning will be given by this TF-IDF vectorizer. Okay, so this is how your extreme looks like and this is how, how your extreme features look like. Okay, so so now uh, we don't use this extrain but we will use this extrain features because they are numbers and as i've told you machines understand numbers better okay so this is the training data that we are going to use so uh, i'll just uh, clear this output because uh, it is not that much tidy okay so we have extrain which is all the messages which is in the form of text and then we have extrain features so it is basically the same extrain but it is rep represented in a numerical way okay so that is the difference so and now we are in the end stages of our code so now let's uh, train our logistic regression model okay so this part of the code will be training the machine learning model that we have so in this case also mention another text as logistic regression okay so model so i'll create a variable as model so i'm going to load an instance of logistic regression model and if you remember we have imported the logistic regression function from uh, sklearn.linear model okay so i'm going to load this model is equal to logistic regression parenthesis okay so this will load your logistic regression model to this particular variable i'll run this and now you can fit your extreme features and your y train to this logistic regression model so this part will be training the logistic regression model with the training data okay so i'm going to use the word model so model is nothing but your logistic regression so model is a model dot fit so model dot fit is so as i've told you you need to give two values one is like the x-axis value and the uh, other is y-axis values kind of things so your x-axis value is nothing but your x-train features 
and your uh, y axis value is your y train okay so x train features is nothing but uh, all the training data but it is represented in a numerical form and y train contains all the corresponding labels okay so label in the sense one represents a male and zero represents a spam male so all those males so let's run this and once you run this your logistic regression model will be trained okay so now if you give a new male it will tell you whether that particular male is a spam male or an am male so this is how uh, this generally works okay so before going into the predictive system now we need to evaluate our model so we need to check uh, how many good predictions how many correct predictions our model is making so that is the next part and this is called as evaluating the model evaluating the trained model okay so that will be our next step so first i'm going to predict on training data prediction on training data so basically what we are doing here is so we have used this x train features and y train in order to uh, train our model now what i'm going to do is as our model is trained i'm going to give only this x train features and i'm going to ask my model to predict the y train values so i'm going to give all the males and i and i'm going to ask my model to predict whether it is a spam male or an am male so it will basically try to predict whether the value is one or zero okay so and i'm going to check how many correct values it is predicting so i'm going to uh, store all the values predicted by my model as prediction on training data okay so prediction on training data is equal to model dot predict so fit is the function so as you can see here fit is the function which is used to fit our logistic regression model to the data set so it is like training our model and for predicting we are we are going to use a different function called as predict so model dot predict x train features okay so as you can see here i'm just giving the x train features values alone but i'm not giving this y train so my model will now find this y train values and it will be all those values one or zero so all those value values will be stored in this prediction on training data okay and now i'm going to compare the values predicted by our model and the true value so the model the values predicted by our model is stored in this particular array and the true values are nothing but y train so we need to compare them so this will be your accuracy on training data okay so accuracy on training data is equal to accuracy score so uh, as you may re remember that we have imported this accuracy score function from sklearn.matrix so i'm using this function again so accuracy score on accuracy on training data is equal to accuracy score so you need to mention two values one is the true value and the predicted value so the true value is nothing but your y train values and your predicted value is prediction on training data okay so prediction on on training data okay so let's run this and now let's find the accuracy score value okay so let's try to print the value i'm going to print accuracy on training data so accuracy on training data is equal to accuracy on yeah. let's name this as data i'll just copy this value and you will get some value here so let's see what is the value so the value is 0 0.967 so 0 0.96 basically represents 96 percentage that means out of 100 predictions so if you use your model to predict 100 different males it will give you correct value for 96 males so that is your accuracy value so 0 0.9 means 90 percentage 0 0.8 means 80 percentage and 0 0.96 means 96 percentage okay which is a very good accuracy score so if you get an accuracy score of 75 more than 75 percentage 80 or 85 percentage then we can say that it is a good model and you are getting an accuracy score of more than 95 percentage that means your model is working really well okay so that is one main thing that we can remember and now we need to find the same the you know accuracy score for test data as i've told you before we will train our logistic regression model with training data which is x train and x test and then we will test our data with sorry x train and the y train and we will test it or evaluate it evaluate it with x test and y test right so we need to evaluate it with the test data 
and you might wonder that uh, you know why i am doing this with training data like uh, i have told you before that we need to test it with test data but if if you can see here i have tested it with uh, training data so that is one main thing or uh, one main reason why i have done this so i'll just explain you in a minute but before that let's do the same thing with test data as well so i'll just copy this code i just need to change few things so i'm going to predict using test data okay so prediction on test data so i'll change this to test okay and this will be your x test features x test y test and uh, accuracy on test data so i'm basically repeating the same thing the only difference is that so instead of using this extreme features i'm using the x test feature so this is predicting using the test data set so prediction on test data prediction on accuracy score okay so everything is perfect so let's run this and again we will try to find the accuracy score Let, let's print it so i'll just change this to test data and this should be copied and pasted here let's see what's our accuracy score on test data okay so your accuracy score on test data is 96.5 percentage which is not very much different from your training data accuracy now the reason I am trying to find the accuracy score on both training data and test data is that in some cases your model may overfit. So overfitting is a problem that occurs uh, you know, uh, most of the times in machine learning. So in that case what happens is your model performs well on your training data set. So you will get a very high accuracy score on your training data. But when you predict it using the test data you will uh, get a very minimum test uh, accuracy score. Say for example let's say that we are getting an accuracy score of 96% in the training data and let's say that if we get only 6 60 percentage accuracy in your test data that means uh, the difference is so huge in your training data and test data in that case we can say that our model is overfitting that it basically means that our model has over trained from the data okay so and we don't want that we want a general solution we don't want our model to over learn anything from the training data and that is the reason we are checking the accuracy score on training data and the testing data as well so the reason we are doing this is i'll give you an analogy for this uh, overfitting let's say that there is a person and this person is a uh, Studying for some exam so let's say that he is studying for a max exam and uh, he has practiced all the questions that has been uh, given in a particular book okay so if all the questions are asked in the exams he can perform well but if the examiner asks different questions that are related to those which have studied he may not uh, perform well so this is basically what happens in the case of overfitting so if you just uh, test it with all the data that uh, that the machine has studied which is training data so it is nothing but all the you know problems that a person has uh, solved in that particular max book so if you ask all those questions you can perform well but if you ask something outside uh, the book he cannot answer so we don't want that kind of a case in our machine learning model so it should uh, perform well in the mail or uh, in the data set that the model has not seen so this basically what this means is like if all the mails is similar to those that you add in your X-train, your model can perform well. But if you use a new mail, if you you know give a new mail that your model has not seen, it may not perform well. So in that case, what you will have is a very low accuracy score on your test data. Okay, so the one main thing that you can uh, you know uh, do in order to find whether your model has not overfitted is to check the accuracy score on training data and test data. If the difference is not uh, very huge, then you can say that your model is working well and your model is not uh, overfitted. As you can see here, the accuracy score are very uh, you know similar. So in that case, we can say that our model doesn't overfit. Okay, so that uh, that is the reason for it, and we get a very good accuracy score of about uh, more than ninety six percent, which is really good. Okay, and uh, now we are in the final part of our code now what we are going to do is build a predictive system so this predictive system what it will do is if you type in a new mail your trained logistic regression model will predict whether that mail is a spam mail or am mail so what it basically does is it will try to predict this uh, zero or one value so if you give a new uh, you know mail it will try to predict whether uh, the label is uh, zero or one so if the label is zero we call it as a spam mail if the label is uh, one we, then we can call that as an am mail okay so that's what we are going to do in our next part of code and this is building a predictive system okay so i'll uh, create an array as input mail and store the data in a uh, list format so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a mail from my data set. I'm going to uh, paste it in this particular list. So I have my uh, mail data set here. I'll just open this with notepad. 
okay so you can just copy any mail here so we can just copy some mail so i'll just uh, you know randomly copy some. okay so i'll just take this mail so if you can see here this mail is an am mail so the first word all the uh, first word in each line represents its category it's a target which is spam or am and the second part of this line represents the mail so i'll copy this uh, particular line so and i'm going to feed it to my uh, machine learning system my logistic regression model okay so i have pasted the mail here so now i need to give this to my uh, model so and another main thing is you need to enclose it within a uh, quote so i'll enclose it within double quotes here so the reason i'm using double quotes is as you can see a single quote here right so if i just use a single quote here what it will consider this uh, it will consider this i as a string so we don't want that so in that case you can just use double quotes so double quotes and uh, here there should also be double quotes okay so i'll enclose all the string uh, in this double quotes and now i'm going to feed this to my machine learning system so if my model is working correctly then it should predict that this particular mail is an am mail or it should basically give the target value as my target value for am mail is one okay so it should give the value as one so that's what we are going to do now so input mail and I'm going to convert this as, as you know that we need to convert this text to numerical values, right? In order, in, we, we need to convert it to feature vector. So in order to do that, we are going to use the feature extraction. So it is the same thing that we have done here. So we will take this particular message and we will transform it using this feature extraction dot transform. Then it will convert this to numerical values. So the second part is convert text to feature vectors okay so i'll name this as input data features so input data features is equal to feature extraction dot transform input data so i'm sorry input mail okay so basically what i'm doing is i'm taking this input mail and i am fitting it with uh, this feature extraction dot transform so that it can convert it into feature vectors which are nothing but numerical values and i'm storing all those numerical value to this input uh, data features okay and now we can try to make our predictions so the next part is making predictions and uh, your prediction will be i'll store my prediction in the keyword prediction so prediction is equal to model dot predict as i told you we will use the fit function in order to train our model and we will use the predict function in order to predict the label value so model dot predict input mail features or input data features input data features and i'm going to print my prediction value okay so this is actually a very simple step so i'm just taking a new mail and i'm converting this mail into a uh, numerical values using this feature extraction part okay and i'm trying to predict the value so model dot predict so this particular line will give you the value as either one or zero and i'm storing that value in this variable called as prediction and i'm trying to print the prediction so we know that this mail is an am mail right so this mail is an am mail so i should get the label value as one because we have labeled all the am mails as one so i'll run this as you can see here we get the label value as one so we know that one basically represents an am mail so uh, as we know that this is uh, basically an am mail so we can say that our model has predicted correctly okay so just uh, include uh, another simple part here so i'm just going to create an if else condition so this prediction value will basically be you know contained in a list as you can see here uh, there is a square bracket and within the square bracket uh, there is one so basically when you predict something using your model that value will be stored in a list so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to check this value and i'm going to tell that if this value is equal to one um, then I, I i just want to print it as am mail and if this value is equal to zero i want it to print as a spam mail okay so i'll just create an if condition here so if prediction so prediction is nothing but the list you get as your output okay so if prediction zero is equal to one so this zero basically represents the first element in your prediction list so let's say that uh, uh, let's create a list as my list 
okay so my list is equal to so let's say that my list contain some values as one two three and so on so if you want to print the first value so what you will do is my list no you mentioned square bracket and zero so i'm going to print this so it will print the first value which is one okay so this is how you can print the first value in a list so my list zero is zero is nothing but your first value and if you want to print the second value you just give one as uh, your value so similarly my list contains only one value right so we need to uh, mention the uh, you know index of the value so prediction zero basically means i am having a prediction list and i want to print the first value in that list so that's the reason we are doing this so if prediction uh, square bracket zero is equal to one so this basically means is if the first value in my prediction uh, array is equal to one then i want to say that it is an am mail okay so it is an am mail or else so the other condition else is nothing but it is in spam mail okay so print spam so if the value that okay so pre, it's spam mail so we need to enclose it in quotes so basically what we are trying to do here is yeah i am trying to find the value of this prediction and if the value of this prediction is equal to 1 and i am going to call this am mail if uh, i get the value as 0 which is the else condition it uh, it will print it as a spam mail okay so we can just enclose this in a bracket and now let's run this it will give you the label as well as it will tell you whether the mail is an am mail or spam mail so you can uh, what you can do is if you take some uh, spam mail example and if you paste that particular uh, line in, inside this bracket so you can just remove this uh, part and you can instead of this mail you can print uh, you know you can copy and paste a spam mail and you can try to predict uh, the label as well as uh, you know when you do that it will basically give you the label as zero and it will tell that it is a spam mail so that is the predictive system that we are making so that's it for this uh, particular pro project and i hope you have understood all the things covered in this particular video i'll just give you a quick recap of all the things that we have done here okay so that it will be useful for you so the first part is importing the dependencies so the dependencies are nothing but the libraries and the functions that we need so we have uh, imported the numpy and the panda so we know that numpy is used in order to create numpy arrays so i think we didn't use numpy anywhere in this particular code but in most of the cases you will need numpy array so it is a good practice to import it so i mean i have imported numpy as np and then i have imported pandas so pandas is used to create a data frame like this okay in, they are used to put put the data in a structured data frame and i am importing it in a short form as pd then i am importing the train test split function which is used to split my data into training and test data where training data is used to train my model and test data is used to evaluate our model and we are using tf idf vectorizer in order to uh, transform the text into numerical values and we are importing the logistic regression model and finally accuracy score in order to find how accurate our model is so that is the first step and then we are uh, you know uh, uploading our data set to the collab environment so i'll give you this data set file you can uh, download it from this from the link in the video description okay so, and we are taking this uh, csv file and uh, and we are loading it to a data frame so after that we are uh, replacing all the null values with null string and next part is checking the first five uh, rows of the data frame and the next part is checking how many rows and columns th there are and then we are replacing this spam uh, by zero and am as one so we are basically doing label encoding and then we are splitting the x and y so x is nothing but all your messages or mails and your y is the category so category is nothing but spam or am which is represented by zero and one okay and we are trying to print it and then we are splitting a data set into training and test data and the next part is converting your text data into feature vectors which are numerical values and after that we can feed those data to our logistic regression model and after that we are evaluating our model so here we are trying to find the accuracy score both on training data and test data as well and the final part is building a predictive system and this system will tell you whether that mail is a spam mail or an am mail if you put that in this particular bracket okay so i hope everyone is clear up to the things covered in this video and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching